Hello everybody. Now I will discuss uh, this another most important the metal forming operations or most widely used metal that is the rolling process. So rolling process the in principle it is a it is a very simple process not very complex. So we use the counter rotating rolls to and try to squeeze the material and we reduce the thickness of the material in using this particular uh, process. So here see the cross section area we start with this and after rolling operation we perform this with the cross section area. So this reduction of the thickness is possible using the uh, rolling operation. So it is a most commonly used process and most economical also and it is a rolls not only perform reduce the thickness but also act to fit the material in the rolling direction. So say sometimes it can act as a guide to put the material in the particular uh, direction. So of course in this case the main mechanism for the friction is there and the, therefore necessary for the rolling operations uh, to perform this operation and it is essential that metal rolling process the level of the friction between the rolls and the workpiece has to be controlled. We can see the different as perspective of this friction role of the friction and in case of the rolling operation. Now types of the rolling we can start with the different the slab bloom blade we start this is the initial workpiece shape. Now we start from this thing the flat rolling we can reduce the plane seat also by using the slab the shape of the slab and the, in this case is from the bloom the shape rolling. Shape means it takes so we can rolling operation we can clear the I section beam we can use the rail basically uh, this kind of the particular type type of the cross section it is possible using the rolling operation. Even we start from the billet also shape rolling we can create from the billet we can use the, the round bar we can use the square bar using the rolling operation. So depending upon this thing we can say the flat rolling, we can say the shape rolling different kind of the shape uh, can be produced using the rolling operations. So now we see that types of the rolling process we see uh, the what a rolling can be utilized the too high pullover rolling mill. So basically depending upon the arrangement of the rolls what is the capability of the taking the load of the by the rolls during the deformation process that there are different types of the rolling operations are usually uh, known. One is that here the too high because this is the this thing uh, these two rollers are there the the in this case the pull over rolling process. So pull over rolling process we can see in this case two roller the equal size rotate in the opposite direction in this case it both are rotates in the opposite directions. So this roller is moving in this direction and this roller is moving other direction with no reversing of the direction. So this work is required to the entrance side for further reduction. So work has to be produced this side uh, to for further reduction of this thing because two rolls are rotating in the opposite direction. Now there is a too high reversing rolling mill. Uh, in this case also in the too high reversing rolling the stroke can be passed back and forth the rolls by reversing their direction of the rotation. So this type of rolling mill has the higher productivity. So you mean to say that it is a irrespective of moving all this thing in only one direction. So this can be to and fro uh, both the directions uh, these rollers can be moved to reduce the uh, thickness. So this is more effective in the sense that the productivity in this particular process is much more uh, for the too high reversing uh, rolling mill. Similarly, we have the three high rolling operation also we can see the three high rolling operation. So this roll takes the load of the from the two, two seats and this is another roll, this is another roll. So depending upon the rolling direction in this case the three high roll we can see that uh, rolling operates on the three working rolls. It consists of the upper and lower driven rolls and the middle roll which rotates by friction. So then this reduction of this process is possible using this particular setup. Now we can have also the four high rolling mills in this case for a, this is the basically these are the known as the backing roll and this is the small rolls this take the deformation the diameter is relatively low in this case but it takes the it actually contribute to the bring the shape and the other toward the supporting roll this thing. So four high mills use the four rolls two working rolls and the two backup rolls so, so these two are the backup rolls is basically acts to basically stabilize this process and the rigidity of the system is increased but working rolls is usually smaller in diameter as compared to the three high rolls in this particular case. Similarly there is a cluster roll there is a tandem mill also so cluster mill in this case if you see there are lots of rolls are supported uh, in this case to brings the rigidity of the uh, system. So it's but actually the shape is basically designed by the this which is roll is in contact with the workpiece this actually brings the, the change of the shape 
so or maybe i can say the thickness of the seed so which is actually uh, decided by these two roles but other roles are basically uh, supporting roles uh, in this particular set or backup roles in this case so that a large diameter supporting roles are there usually a large diameter supporting roles are there the cluster mill is capable of producing very thin sheet metal with a high dimensional accuracy so for example aluminum foil for food packaging is can be produced using this cluster mill operations so this is an example similarly the tandem mill also there we can see this is the so many uh, different set of the and the roll rollers are there so continuous rolls mills have a series of the rolling mills that is arranged one after another you can see the series of the rolling mills one after another and the gradually decreasing the thickness of the sheet and in this case tandem roll tandem cold mill is basically capable of the progressively and the effectively reducing thickness of the strip in a single pass so in this case sometimes in a single pass we need to produce the large reduction in the thickness so in that case the tandem mill is the most effective in this case because it's gradually reducing the thickness and sometimes we can eliminate two different stages for example we can reduce the any any of the rolling operations is basically limited by the amount of the uh, thickness of the reduction of the thickness we cannot reduce in a single step very high thickness to the very low thickness there must be some kind of the limited value but if you want system if you follow the tandem mill also so a large amount of the thickness is possible using this system but just follow the principle of the progressively reducing the the thickness of the sheet during the deformation by the rolling operation now if you look into this uh, rolling process analysis of rolling the rolls contact rolling sheet angle uh, arc as defined by the angle alpha so here this angle is alpha so this part is in contact with the the workpiece so this angle is known as the angle alpha each roll has radius r you can say and has a surface velocity vn so in this case roll also rotates one certain velocity so it is having the velocity v roller velocity v and of course but this roller velocity v is must be it's it is different from the inlet velocity of the sheet and outlet velocity of the sheet so remember during this deformation process the volume conservation is there so in principle the v1 uh, should be greater than v0 because the sheet is reduced so if you perform the continuity the constant in this case the maintain the material volume in this case so inlet velocity should be less than the outlet velocity such that uh, we can say the a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 to maintain the continuity of the deformation this process and the roller velocity is something different because this roller velocity is some uh, some point of time it is the some intermediate point of time this uh, this velocity is basically the equivalent to the base uh, the strip velocity and the intermediate point but other cases with reference to that there must be some mismatch of the uh, velocity so in this case probably there might be having some kind of the this this neutral uh, zone that means neutral point so here one point or zone along the contact arc where the work velocity equals to the roll velocity so at particular point this work velocity or roll velocity will be there that is called the neutral point and this is also no slip point but apart at the neutral point is the no slip point but apart from this other point there must be slips must occurs between the roller and the workpiece so on the other side the neutral point slipping and the friction occurs between the roll and the seat and friction direction will also be different so depending on the relative velocity of this thing the slip occurs between the roller and the this uh, uh, workpiece surface so uh, the seat can be qualified by the s s uh, this thing the ratio the amount of the slip between the roller and the seat can be qualified vf minus vr by vr vf is the final velocity vr is the roll velocity so that uh, difference with respect to the roll velocity which is known as the slip associated with this uh, this process now when you try to discuss this rolling operation are telling this is most important but this rolling operation is basically is applicable even we can look into the hot rolling of the steel and this particular the rolling operation is applicable to perform the very uh, st steel sheet most widely applicable in this particular the sheet uh, the steel forming operation the basically in production of the steels one of the consequence of the reheating process now we try to look into the metallurgical aspect associated with the hot rolling of the uh, steel process so we try to look into the different metallurgical aspect first and uh, the what is the consequence effect of this metallurgy to the manufacturing process 
So we are talking about the hot rolling of the steel. So basically performing the rolling operation at the relatively high temperature. So here uh, the reheating process is basically grain coarsening. So we just heat the sample with the component. So this will try to facilitate the grain growth and at the same it means that grain coarsening phenomena is associated with that. Second part is that control of the grain coarsening beaver that means uh, in this case it, the step is very important in design of the thermomechanical process and uh, to produce the fine grain product. So of course there is a tendency to form the coarse grain associated with the hot rolling operations of the steel uh, of course but uh, the coarse grain does not help though maybe to achieve very fine properties of this uh, component so or very uh, good properties or balanced properties in that cases we always try to produce some kind of the the fine grain structure of the steels associated with this thing now in micro alloy steel the reheating temperature should be high enough to provide the stability of the particles the stable particles so we see the micro alloy steel in this case it try to reheating try to produce the solubility of the stable particles but if the stable particle is not dissolved in that case the beneficial precipitation hardening effects cannot be obtained so in that case the stable particles remain undissolved it's not able to dissolve in this particular say process conditions then the hardening effect by precipitation cannot be obtained or cannot be observed in this particular case so sometimes the addition of the aluminium niobium vanadium titanium uh, with this uh, uh, steel basically it actually produces some kind of the abnormal grain growth so which involves growth of the very few grains one preferred direction basically and relatively uh, unchanged other matrix so other part remains unaffected but only very few selective grains can abnormally grow with the addition of the different micro alloy uh, system in case of the steel so this is one problem associated with this thing the um, process now abnormal grain growth occurs at temperature which are relate significantly lower than the micro alloy solution temperature so if it is a micro alloy solution temperature in the in that cases we can observe the the abnormal grain growth the temperature that corresponds to the commencing of the abnormal grain growth is sometimes referred to as the grain coarsening uh, temperature. So basically we see when we observe this kind of the abnormal grain growth, the te at temperature which temperature is associated with that, then we can consider this as a grain coarsening temperature. So these are the typical metallurgical aspect. Now when we perform this steel, the hot forming operations, in this case the prior to the start of the hot rolling operations the steel microstructure is usually consist of the coarse equiex grains of austenite we assume that usually this is the coarse equiex uh, austenitic structure grain structure of the steels before the deformation or before performing the forming operations now during passing of the rolls so that means with the application of the rolls when we apply it we can see that austenite grains are getting flattened and elongated we see this is the with the application of this thing the grains are elongated one this uh, one direction the grains are elongated elongated grain austenite grain and on an average and each austenite grain undergoes a dimensional change corresponds to the workpiece as a whole so what dimensional change we can see in this case we can see that the deformation bands may also be induced within this grain so deformation band can be induced within this grain during the deformation of this austenitic grains now the three following kinds of the restoration process but what way we can restore we can achieve the very fine grain structure in the hot rolling operation so that one kind of the this restoration process of the very fine structure there are three different kind of the process is there one is the dynamic restoration process this process starts and completes during the deformation so during the deformation process the dynamic restoration process is a, a continuous process basically starts and completes so during the deformation then metadynamic restoration process this process starts during the deformation and completes after the deformation this is also the static restoration process also this process starts and completes after the deformation only so these are the typical consequence of the different restoration process whether it is dynamic in nature metadynamic or whether it is static so it occurs depending upon the sequence the before after so that particular sequence uh, of the uh, deformation process now if we see 
the dynamic restoration process in this case the dynamic restoration process is basically explain or includes the dynamic recovery and dynamic crystallization so it starts to when the there is deformation starts even it ends in the during the deformation it continue and at the end of the process it can stop like that so similarly dynamic recovery is basically try to uh, reduce the work hardening effect without motion of the large angle grain boundary so without much motion of the dislocation without much motion of the large angle grain boundary this dynamic recovery is basically reduces the strain hardening effect and it occurs in a range of the strain less than that of the peak stress so before reaching the uh, peak stress with the low value of the stress the dynamic recovery might happen the similarly once dynamic recovery occurs then it is basically associated with the dynamic recrystallization also this also occurs in a range of the strain that corresponds to the steady state flow stress value at this point and dynamic recrystallization is basically associated with the relatively high temperature so in this case roll out of dynamic recrystallization of the austenitic particle rolling of the copper manganese steel is very small uh, in this case dynamic recrystallization for the austenitic in copper manganese steel is usually small and it is due to the fact that critical strain required for achieving the steady state flow is very very large so that's why until and unless it reaches that critical value then dynamic recrystallization will not start so even whatever may be the temperature condition so therefore this grain refinement of the steels is usually achieved is by static recrystallization so once it's not able to achieve the critical value to start the dynamic recrystallization process so definitely the grain refinement should happen following the static recrystallization process which is usually occurs at the relatively low temperature so therefore the recrystallization rate and the size of the recrystallized grain is basically controlled by the three major factors one is the what is the austenitic grain size period deformation of the initial grain size and which is a function of temperature also so that is the one factor what is the initial grain size second factor is the what is the temperature of the recrystallization the very high temperature moderate or low temperature and third is the what is the amount of the deformation that means stored energy within the uh, during the deformation of the rolling operation so so this amount of the stored energy can decide what is the level of recrystallization is happens that is also another phenomena associated with this hot rolling of the steel so here we can discuss the static restoration process in this case we see the microstructure of the developed by dynamic restoration are not stable in that cases if the dynamic the whatever microstructure is produced by the dynamic restoration then it is if it is not stable uh, at elevated temperature and at elevated temperature are modified by the meta dynamic and static restoration process so when the dynamic microstructure developed by the dynamic restoration process are not stable even at high temperature then this is modified by the meta dynamic restoration or the static restoration process or i can say the uh, the recovery process the latter process may include the static recovery the restoration process static restoration process means basically static recovery and static recrystallization also and even sometimes it's a meta dynamic recrystallization process but in hot rolling operation the static recrystallization may start spontaneously but nuclei of the recrystallization takes place preferably by the elongated grain boundaries and the interfaces of the deformation band so that means the recrystallization start the nucleation start one some prepared location we see this figure also here you can see this figure that in this thing deform the grain in the deformation band is there dislocation density near the grain boundary is also high so that part actually acts as a start of the nucleation process from where nucleation start and then it further grow and take the uh, reach the uh, particular size of the uh, grain in this in this cases so we can this see that in dynamic crystallization is the true stress versus strain deformation is something like that is reaching the flow stress maximum value and then gradually it is reducing and after that it is try to reach the steady state value this is a typical nature of the stress strain curve associated with the dynamic recrystallization process uh, or i can say the flow stress curve but in case of the the fractional softening usually happens or three recrystallization for static recrystallization usually happens or we can say that this one side is the static recrystallization other side is the the meta dynamic recrystallization and what is the amount of the fractional softening is associated with this thing and we see what is the static recovery so basically we are trying to say that that this process the restoration process is basically static can be static can be dynamic or though we are say restoration means it includes both the uh, recovery dynamic recovery as well as the recrystallization both are there but the recovery using the static recovery or dynamic recovery the amount of the energy restored is very very small actually but 
whatever energy is basically really stored energy is this mainly for the either dynamic recrystallization or static recrystallization process now at relatively high temperature when or a particular situation when the dynamic recrystallization is not stable then it uh, after dynamic recrystallization it try to reach certain uh, uh, level of the uh, grains and then further it start to allow the the static recrystallization process associated with the hot rolling of the steel now if we consider the effects of the temperature and the micro allowing we can see that the higher rolling temperature is there the greater number of the deformed grains will be the recrystallized so rolling temperature is high so large amount of the deformed grains will try to recrystallize after recrystallization you try to follow from the strain free very fine grains is possible to develop but the lowest temperature the austenitic recrystallizes completely immediately lowest temperature after deformation which is referred to as the recrystallization temperature the recrystallization temperature increases with increasing the level of the micro alloy solute uh, in this case but uh, columbium titanium and the to a lesser degree vanadium these actually try to uh, retard the both the dynamic and static recrystallization so this particular element uh, uh, is try to retard the dynamic recrystallization so a very pronounced retardation is produced by increasing the columbian contact up to 0.06 percentage is possible so the effect increase with decrease in the temperature the effect is basically uh, increases with decrease in the temperature but at temperature below 900 degree centigrade the recrystallization can be retarded by more than two orders of the magnitude so i mean to say that recrystallization is basically retarded in presence of the different kind of the elements here now uh, here if you analyze this particular element columbium uh, for the the effect on the recrystallization and time for the 70 percent recrystallization we can see the time for the 70 percent recrystallization is the the percentage of columbium is the very high 0.08 percent it takes much more to reach the 75 percent even it is the low temperature but at the high temperature it takes less time for the 70 percent recrystallization so these are the effect of the this temperature as well as the the effect of the columbium uh, presence of this columbium what it influence the recrystallization behavior uh, of an uh, of the steel now factors affecting the critical reduction for recrystallization so here you can see that the critical amount of the deformation driving each from the restoration process increases so critical amount rapidly with decrease in the deformation temperature so critical amount of the deformation is basically driving each from of the restoration process and we see that this value depending upon the deformation temperature it also increases with addition of the micro alloying elements and the specifically uh, niobium so basically if we add the niobium in the is the one of the micro alloying element for the steel it actually increases the this critical values to start the recrystallization process is basically enhanced in presence of the niobium so here you see this thing temperature versus this reduction in this case the or temperatures versus in the strain also you can see that this part of the recrystallized zone and this is the partial partial recrystallized zone and this is the recovery zone we can see that at the relatively high temperature and the relatively large amount of the strain we can expect the full recrystallization occur the complete deformation zone by consumption of the old grain the new recrystallized grain is usually forms relatively at the very high temperature and relatively at the high amount of the strain so they here but when some very low amount of the strain recrystallization might happen but in that cases partially recrystallization is usually occurs which is which means that some uh, not all the old grain uh, converted to the new uh, recrystallized grain in this case some few old grain is basically converted to the recrystallized grain and initial very very low strain and the even very low temperature that is called the recovery zone so in case rearrangement of the dislocations and then some amount of the recovery is usually happens in these cases but recovery is not that much of effective uh, like recrystallization process now structural changes in steel during the cooling process also uh, we can see the after hot rolling the workpiece is subject to the combination of the air and the water cooling we follow usually follow the air cooling and the water cooling so in this case the ferrite grain size of the rolled steel will be affected by the finishing rolling temperature what is the finishing rolling temperature that means up to after performing the rolling operation what was the temperature then what is the delay time between the rolling uh, inception of the cooling with water 
and finally the third factor is the cooling rate so all these factors is basically the the structural final microstructure is decided uh, using this uh, this also fact uh, factors for example if delay time is much more then the gain size is relatively bigger if delay time is very low the gain size is finer so it means that the delay time is much more means probably having the uh, again coarsening effect is there so that's why gain size is relatively bigger now if you say the cooling rate cooling rate is very quickly if you cool it or very slowly you can cool it so if you see the the mean ferrite gain diameter you see the uh, we can see the the diameter will be very low i can say the low in these cases the a relatively low cooling rate but high cooling rate uh, we can see that uh, high temperature rolling process these are the this zone is the high temperature high rolling temperature over this zone so mean ferrite diameter will be uh, even for the high rolling temperature but in, in this cases the cooling rate is relatively high we can expect the 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 smaller size of the grain but if cooling rate is very slow in this case uh, and this the mean ferrite diameter is basically uh, will be higher because at uh, for the hot rolling operation so this kind of the conclusion can make it the effect of the structural changes mainly the grain size associated with the this cooling rate and associated with the uh, delay time now when you are talking about the the rolling operation rolling process and hot rolling of the steel process but of course rolling is also not free from any kind of the defects so rolling is also associated with different types of the defect might happen during the operation one is the wavy edge we can see the wavy edge this occurs when the con concave rolls bend leading to the elastic deformation so concave it's a type of the uh, this concave rolls we use it and it may lead to the the elastic deformation in this case the thickness at the center implies that the edges are more elongated it looks like or it seems the edges are uh, more elongated uh, in this cases so that means non uniform distribution or maybe one part is uh, the design of the concave roll here is the problem to create this uh, wavy edge uh, uh, in this particular process then edge crack also sometimes we can along the edge we can find out the crack it means that the it's basically occurs that tensile stresses induced at the workpiece surfaces if a large amount of the tensile stresses for a secondary tensile stresses induces at the workpiece surface and that can results in the crack formation because of the non uniform heating in even for the non uniform rolling pressure also or certain cases the excess quenching might happen that actually create some kind of the crack along the edge similarly zipper crack we can see the zipper crack also occurs due to the bending of the rolls under the high rolling pressure and it causes the compressive stress along the edge so uh, that edge and tensile stress in the center so there is a difference in this thing the compressive stress and the edge and the the tensile stress along the centers this will induces uh, it this tensile stress induces the workpiece by the homogeneous deformation that actually create some kind of the uh, zipper uh, cracks or uh, associated with the rolling operation so finally alligatoring means during the rolling process the layers uh, of the metal stock might separate and in some cases here you can see the layers can separate leading to the opening of the slabs uh, create some kind of alligator cracks you can see the alligator cracks can be there the sheet metal is basically adhered to the roll surface and follow the path of the respective roll causing sheet to appear on the plane so basically in this case over the plane there is a uh, some kind of the uh, localized deformation might happen and that localized deformation is the excessive deformation or some kind of the non uniform deformation in the very localized position so usually along the center uh, of this component so this can create the alligator and this is one kind of the defect associated with the uh, loading operation the uh, rolling uh, process now we'll try to look into one uh, case study associated uh, with this uh, process so here we can see that the extrusion process and the in the extrusion process we see the surface layer and the matrix material the surface layer and the matrix material of the cold extrusion punch so cold extrusion process and for the punch the endure the different surface environment so we can prepare this uh, uh, the punch following the cold extrusion process the surface and the interior matrix uh, associated with the different kind of the environment so 
the surface layer is typically suffers from usually wear from the surface layer wear damage and at the high temperature and because the forming material flow quickly between the forming material and the layer during the metal forming operation so it means that during the metal forming operation uh, the between the layer and the internal matter there might be the flow differences when performing the metal forming operation so surface layer can be different way uh, the surface layer uh, can expose to the the deform in the different way so that can create some kind of the uh, defect also the fact that surface layer resist the surface damage of course that is the purpose of using the uh, surface layer to, uh, to protect the uh, matrix material and that explain why the matrix material mainly suffers from the impact loading during the mechanical forming process so so you can see the over a surface layer it's a protect the uh, internal matter but the matrix material is subjected to some kind of the uh, impact loading during the metal forming operation so here you see that the fracture zone in the sharp corner of the punch top you can the fracture zone you can observe the punch top also and the the crack initiation in the neighborhood of the contact surface of the punch top so you see this is the part where we can create the crack formation can starts uh, on this uh, on this particular position uh, during this forming operations and we see the forming process of the socket using this thing the cold extrusion punch is used for manufacturing of all this uh, socket so therefore we see that the cold extrusion punch is used both in the surface conditions of impact loading as well as the it is also associated with the exposure to the severe wear so both kind of extreme environment uh, it is basically we use it therefore fatigue fracture is a major contributing factor for the punch failure so punch failure is basically one of the major observed fatigue fracture is the main uh, usually occurs associated with the uh, punch failure so so therefore what we can enhance the life of this punch we can analyze this their nature of the failure the cause of the failure uh, for these cases and we can see that the it is better better to improve the fatigue life of the punch can be increased to make it the uh, the usable or uh, to make in the effective way so here by considering the manufacturing process of the cold extrusion punch we can see that owing to the necessity of the high temperature we can see this actually as it, we, it is we say it's a cold extrusion punch so therefore cold extrusion punch is there so uh, in this case but if we perform the this in the high temperature and the high heating period uh, surface treatment heat treatment all is associated with the cold extrusion punch so since it is exposure over a high temperature for a long duration also and perform the heat treatment over a long duration that actually create some kind of the favor conditions for the grain coarsening or grain growth to occurs and that creates the even carbides can becomes the um, carbides can be coarsening uh, during this heat treatment or high temperature exposure of the punch when you are cold uh, extrusion punch when you manufacture this punch so that might be a problem associated with this thing because material chosen for the cold extrusion process must contain the proper elements such as small body number titanium is micro alloy element that actually prevents the growth so large amount of the micro alloy elements we can add uh, we, we can choose that that such kind of the material that actually prevent the grain coarsening effect and once you can prevent the grain coarsening effect uh, then the, we can prevent the fatigue failure uh, of this uh, punch component so this is just a case study to understand the grain coarsening effect or the roles of the different micro alloying elements to understand the different failure behavior uh, of the uh, of this uh, cold extrusion punch uh, component so now here i have tried to explain the different uh, forming operation which is already known this is the bulk deformation process and there we the uh, the mostly the extrusion process and the rolling process different sheet metal forming operations uh, process bending operations we'll try to discuss in this particular module i hope this will help to understand to get the overall view of the bulk deformation process so thank you very much for your kind attention